Ryan Darren, good morning. Yeah, Mitchell, good morning. What about, will you say it's the last time I'll ever do this? Uh, no, I know I, I, I talked talk to you about it once before, I think on my way, an hour before I came in. Um, that, uh, I told a judge that I'd try and find other ways to do it, and that's what I intend to do, but I, I'd never say never. So, how bad was it? How rough was it? Um, the first two weeks in solitary confinement in MAP, um, in the city, that was tough, because on a 40 degree heat day there, the air conditioning wasn't working very well, and, uh, you, there's no refrigeration in a, in a, in a 23 hour lock up cell, so you, uh, the milk curdles and turns into junk it in about four or five hours. Uh, and it, it, it's, then I got one out, the weirdest thing was, and I won't use his name, but I now call him, uh, JMK, is Jill Mars Killer. Uh, he was sort of the reason I was in there, and, uh, he and I were in the same same prison, same same floor, nearly adjacent cells. And we were doing, they take me down to the exercise yard for a walk around for an hour, then escort me back up and then keep the prison locked down while they took him down for an hour. I thought, isn't it weird we're doing the same sentence at the moment for at least for a couple of weeks? But look, out here, I mean, going from that to here to Langy Calcal is like going to the Hilton. Mm. I mean, there's a, I know we have to have, uh, you know, it has to be, Prisoners have to rehabilitate people and get them ready to come on the outside. But, you know, I, I, I said earlier today, it's um, I, we ate better than some pensioners. I mean, we, get, we eat more, more meat in a week. I didn't, but the guys were eating more meat in a week than you'd eat, they'd eat in a month. Is that wrong? Do you think it's too comfortable? Yes, I do. Yes, what do you, what do you want? Think, bread and water? No, no, I don't. But I don't think we need to know some of the waste that's in here. I think yeah. some of the guys who are in it should not be here. I mean, I think guys should be treated and, and eased back in the community and taken on day leave to the city to get used to being out in, in public and that sort of stuff. That's fine. But when you get guys like the, like the hot chocolate rapist who I was within two feet of in my unit last night, a guy who, you know, who did terrible crimes of drugging and raping and videoing victims, he's still got two years to go on a, what I thought was a very light sentence anyway. And he's out there, he's been transferred to Ararat from Ararat, laughing and joking last night, and I thought, this isn't right. This isn't, that part isn't right. Why were you, why were you in solitary? Was that for protection, was it? Yes. Mm. And, and I, for protection, and they also, they didn't, I, I, I assume they didn't know where to put me. I thought I'd be in solitary for a couple of days while they worked out where to put me, and I didn't know I was coming to Langy Calcal uh, until I was actually in, in the, the, the prison uh, truck, like the armoured car, and we were doing a milk run to the remand centre, then Port Phillip, and then I heard a guard say, hey, we've got another two hours to go to Langy Calcal, and that's when I knew I was coming here. How's your health? Very good. Um, I, I'd, walk, um, I'd walk a couple of hours a day, usually by myself, and uh, believe it or not, last night I was, there's a 5K walk you can do, still in the prison grounds. Uh, you can go off, you leave your card at the door and go for a walk over the prison farm, and I'm doing 5Ks in 50 minutes, so I'm pretty good. Okay. I appreciate. And that, well, obviously, you had to be get uh, looked after properly because of your transplant. Yes, yeah. And look, and everybody's treated well. You get free medication. Everybody's just, the medical lineup's pretty big in the morning for the guys with their, especially with their methadone and other, other, other tablets. All your medication's free. Plenty of milk and bread and stuff and good food. Um, Do you have any trouble from other prisoners? Uh, no, I you just I, I kept kept well clear of some of them. The worst, the worst, they, they get locked up at night across what I call the bridge of the dam in a sort of boarding house, the former mansion on the farm. They're, they're over there, but during the day they're out and about, and they'd ignore me. Some of us get the, get the gimlet stare, you know, and uh, I, I didn't ask anybody what, that, what, they're, what they're in for. Um, and if they told me, they told me. Many of them, who said, you know, it, it wasn't their fault, their, their girlfriend lied, it wasn't, you know, and suddenly you find you're the only guilty person in there, but uh, you expect that. Ah, you accept you were guilty. <laughs> oh, well, well, guilty to the extent that um, I found guilty. Look, Neil, you don't agree with this, but it was, remember this one, was an inadvertent, even the, the, the prosecutor said it was an inadvertent contempt. And I mean, in the past, I've, had said, I've, I've rocked up and said, yep, on the steps of Parliament House, I did it deliberately and deserved the five months uh, under house arrest because I deliberately named two men whose names were suppressed. But in this case, I put something on my blog five hours before it was suppressed and... I didn't take it down fast enough. Well, the Herald Sun, which had on page one a story saying that, um, his, that, that, that I won't go into it again, um, but saying that he was guilty, and I thought, that's contempt of court, I won't use that. They didn't get, A, they didn't get charged, and they didn't go back and say, you've got to burn every old copy of the Herald Sun. Yeah. They argued, I should have to, have to remove, remove my blog, which was put up quite legally five hours before Justice Nettle brought it down. So it was a mistake? Yes, it was a mistake, yes. Yeah. But yes, it was a mistake. Well, well, how in that case were you a scapegoat if it was a mistake? Because they decided to come after me. They didn't go after anybody else. Didn't go after the age. Didn't go after 3AW. I think you guys also um, made it made a blue. 
reporting what the Herald Sun had said. No, we might have. But I, I'm sure you did. You did the, the judge himself said you maintain you're innocent, but you don't now. No, I, I say that I found me guilty. When you found you guilty, you're guilty. But it was... We've been down, we went down, went down the track last time. I will say I am guilty of committing an innocent mistake that morning, and I did. I put it up there, but it wasn't illegal when I did it, and it wasn't, and it wasn't judged illegal for the age of the Herald Sun to do it, and the editor did not get charged, did not get cautioned, did not get called before the court. Never. So, so you're innocent. That's why I say that's why I say that I that I'm, I'm innocent of I am innocent of a deliberate contempt of court. I'll say that. You're innocent in that it was inadvertent, is what you're saying. Hmm? You're yes. in, in that it was inadvertent. Yeah. yeah. But and you, you, you'd have to concede a hundred thousand dollar fine. That's corporate stuff. Oh, you I, agree. That, I agree. You know, I agree. I agree. And, and and also, Neil, one thing got me through this is I and why I decided to go to jail, apart from anything else, was that Simon Cooper, that magistrate, that magistrate who was convicted, uh, and he was in a position of you talking earlier about people in positions of authority and people who should know better. He didn't spend one one day in jail. Of a, of a three-year term, was totally suspended. Not one dollar in fines, like a hundred thousand, and not one hour community service. Oh, that's and right. the judge, and, and, and he didn't even get. And because of the, the judge's um, discretion, he is not even on the sexual offenders list. Now, how the hell can that be? I agree, but what, I don't see how that links to you going to jail. Because it, not it shows fine, that, but because choosing it, I to go to jail. I, I, I tell you how it links because it shows you how stupid the system is, how inconsistent the system is. Now, the only good thing about all this is that what I found while I'm in here is that. The government's plans and the revised parole board, that is starting to bite. It is starting to work, and prisoners uh, realise they're not getting a, it's not a walk in the park. You just don't get out on your, on your bottom, as they say. You don't get out on your minimum sentence. Right. And that is, that is encouraging. I've seen guys, more than a dozen guys, have their parole knocked back while I've been in here in Langan Calcutta. These are guys who are supposedly, because of the style of prison, are getting close to release date. And, and the parole board, which is the old one, used to just rubber stamp whatever the corrections department said, they're sending back for new reports and extra reports and, and you are going to get disasters like it happened you know, to Luke Batty, you know, tragedies like that where magistrates stuff up and let men, let people out on bail who shouldn't be and, and there are mess, mess ups like that. But it is getting better. I, I, I really believe that. Yeah, I, there's argument whether the mag- if we want to the magistrate stuffing up, it's whether the evidence was put in front of him is part of the argument. But anyway, look, what about you? Is it right that you're going to write a book? No. No. You've just kept no. a diary. You're going to publish the diary. Uh, yes, I will publish the diary, and uh, I think I'm a bit worried about that because yesterday, I think it was yesterday or Wednesday, uh, they threw everybody out of my unit, put all the blinds down, went inside with a camera and photographed every piece of paper I had, and then went and, and, and went into my computer. I didn't have a computer. The, twice they let me use a computer over about five weeks, seven weeks. They, um, I think they copied all that, but I'm not I'm not worried about anything like that. I mean, I've got. I've, I've copied it. I've had a printed copy of it anyway, but I will print. I will have a diary published somewhere. You won't be able to make money out of that, will you? Proceeds uh, no, from? I, no, I won't. So uh, if, I, if, any, if, I, if I get if, if I get paid for it, uh, I'd, I'd say to whoever gets it, I'd say donate it to the um, donate it to the uh, Austin Hospital um, um, transplant, yeah. transplant re- research. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Look, uh, I, won't, I won't be doing a call, me, all right? <laughs> That's well. I'm pleased to hear that. Good. Good to hear. You're a bit emotional when you got out. Why? Yes, I was. I don't. I don't know. I think uh, seeing people like George Helvargas uh, yeah. really got to me. Um, people like him, and, and having I recently you know, spent some time with, um, with Noel Dixon, you know, Sarah Cafferty's mum. You know, there's people like that. You think? I mean, they're, they're the people that we should we should be concentrating on. It's just what they've been through. It's just, George, especially, has just been a nightmare for more than a decade, and he's been let down again and again. I believe. That's true. And why, uh, where's, is it right the beard's gone because you couldn't get something to diet? <laughs> no, the beard is gone. Actually, I did it mainly on the first time I moved in because I, and I couldn't get everybody to cut it. They said they couldn't trust anybody with a pair of scissors around me, so I shaved it off myself under, under guard's uh, supervision because it sounds corny to you, but as a sort of a, a bit of a protest, I said, well, the, the, you know, the, the courts are chopping and cutting and slicing away at people's safety in the communities community's right, so I'll do a bit of personal vandalism myself. And the second thing was that also it was good not being recognised for a few days in and around the prisons. Well, when you got out in the 80s, you went and had a glass of wine. You're not going to do that? No, I won't be doing that. <laughs> no, no, that way. I will be having a glass of non-alcoholic beer. Good on you, Darren. Thank you. Darren Hinch, out of jail.